The Raleigh Cigarette Program, starring Red Skelton with Oz and Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, and Wonderful Smith. <laughs> Smokers, before you buy your next pack of cigarettes, here is one important tobacco fact you should know, a fact that speaks volumes about cigarette quality. Without exception, tobacco experts select the more golden leaf when buying for quality. That is an actual trade-accepted fact, the inside story that proves conclusively that Raleigh cigarettes are definitely superior. Compare the open ends of a pack of Raleigh's with any other brand. You'll see instantly the tobacco in Raleigh's is more golden in color. The infallible test of choicer, more expensive tobaccos. And Raleigh's are skillfully blended from 31 of these finer tobaccos to give you the smooth, rich, incomparably mild flavor of Raleigh cigarettes. Raleigh's give you valuable coupons, too, redeemable for luxury premiums, including United States war stamps. Let your eyes be your guide in buying cigarettes. You'll see that it pays in many ways to smoke Raleigh's. Raleigh cigarettes. That was Oz and Elson and his orchestra playing How About You. And now we bring you Mr. Golden Mayor's newest young comedian. The star of our show, Red Skelton. Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you tonight, Truman? Oh, fine, Red. Say, where have you been? Say, I've been over to the market doing a little shopping. Boy, are those food prices high. <laughs> they don't sell butter by the pound anymore. It's a blob or a dab. <laughs> Oh, Red, I thought they were going to put a ceiling on food. Well, they did put a ceiling on food, but they should have put a ceiling on the ceiling. <laughs> I was on the ceiling once. <laughs> you were, Ozzy? Yeah, I got drunk and followed a fly. <laughs> well, you know, they're vicious looking when you get up close. <laughs> Say, Red, why don't you raise vegetables? Well, I am, Truman. I, I just planted a victory garden. Put it right out in the middle of my yard. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah. Well, that's swell, Red. But you know, I hate to see all the grass plowed up, though. What grass? <laughs> At my house, you don't see any lawn. Just gopher fur waving in the breeze. <laughs> Say, have you really got a lot of gophers, Red? Have I? I started digging, see, and one gopher came out and watched me for a while, and then he ran back down inside yelling, Come on, fellas, this time he means it. <laughs> Hiya, Red. Hiya, Harriet. Say, I was just telling Truman about my victory garden. Oh, yes, I planted one, too. Yeah, I guess you won't starve, huh? Nope, not unless I lose my can opener. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Harriet, do you like working in this hot California sun? Oh, I don't mind it, Truman, except it makes my eyes squint. Yeah, me too. My eyes squint so much that a neighbor walked over yesterday and said, Pardon me, have you got time to mow my lawn before you go back to Santa Anita? <laughs> well, you know, it's easy to grow things out here in California yeah. where the soil is so rich. Yeah, boy, what rich soil. <laughs> I planted a whisk broom yesterday, and guess what came up? More whisk brooms? No, six Pullman porters. <laughs> you know, talking about rich soil, yeah. in Florida, I know a guy whose oranges are so large, he has to bring them into the house on a float. Florida, huh? Uh -huh. That's nothing. Two days ago, I stuck a scarecrow in the ground. Now he looks better than I do. <laughs> Speaking of gardens, I heard that music helps to make things grow. Music helps things grow? That's right. Oh, that's why my neighbor planted my jute box. <laughs> oh, say, by the way, I saw your picture, Jute Box Jenny, Harriet, and it was very good, too. In fact, I think I'll go see it again. <laughs> it's on the bill with my picture, Ship Ahoy. <laughs> Are you having trouble with your garden, Ray? Yeah, I'm having trouble with the neighbor's children. Everything I plant comes up squash. I was a squash grower once. Huh? I was a squash grower once. <laughs> you were, Ozzy? Yeah, until an army tank corps came along. <laughs> what happened? They squished my squash. <laughs> 
You know, you should stick with your garden, Red. Maybe you'll make something out of yeah, it. You know, I'd like to raise some orange trees. They tell me that all you have to do is put a pit in the ground, and up comes orange trees. Well, I tried that, Red. I put a pit in the ground, but it died. Yeah, looks like your pit's going to pot. <laughs> Well, Red, you know, my garden was almost washed away with all the rain Yeah, I, I was smart, though I dug some irrigation ditches so my, the rain wouldn't wash my garden away Worked, huh? Yeah, washed my house away instead <laughs> Well, anyway, Red, to have a successful garden, you have to do a lot of digging Yeah It's that way all over the world Yeah, I know The Japs in Tokyo are doing a lot of digging They are? What are they planting? Each other <laughs> Sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Till I come marching home. Don't go walking down Lover's Lane with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Don't go walking down Lover's Lane with anyone else but me. Till I come marching home. So you know the third verse of Anchors Away. That's interesting indeed. But I really got burning when I heard you were learning Fight on for old Lockheed Oh, don't sit under the apple tree With anyone else but me Till I come marching home I won't sit under the apple tree With anyone else but you Anyone else but you Anyone else but you No, no, no I won't sit under the apple tree With anyone else but you Till you come marching home My goodness me You seem to be the most jealous man I've seen Cause I've had one or two dates With some sailor boys And a rather cute marine I won't sit under the apple tree With anyone else but you Honest, I won't, honey, because there's two feet of snow under it, and it's as cold as all get out. That was Harriet Hilliard giving some good advice about sitting under the apple tree, and very good, too, Harriet. <laughs> uh, pardon me, Red. Would I seem too hammy if I should say as follows... I, too, sang part of the vocal chorus. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so, oh, yeah, Ozzie Nelson, too. <laughs> Say, Red. Uh, Red, huh? I see that Mr. Raleigh is still in town. Yeah, he's still living out my house, too. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, he says he's going to get something for his money. <laughs> You should see those great Dane dogs he's got with him, though. Oh, so that's why your car sits out all night. The dogs are sleeping in the garage. Are you kidding? The dogs are in my room. I'm in the garage. <laughs> hey, maybe as soon as we start selling more Raleigh cigarettes, you go back to Louisville, huh? But I'd like to have one of those big dogs, though. You like dogs? Yeah, I think everybody likes animals of some kind. What do you say? Tonight, let's show different types of people and their loves for animals. First out west, the favorite animal is the horse. And riding to the village blacksmith stand, we find Dead Eye. Whoa! I said whoa, not collapse. Hi, Mr. Dead Eye. Say, don't you know the sheriff is looking for you? Yeah, every state in the union is trying to get their hands on me, except in Texas. What about Texas? They're too busy clapping. <laughs> well, wonderful, you sure got a nice blacksmith shop here. How's business? It's picking up. This morning, two horses passed by and looked in. <laughs> 
Ain't it kind of dangerous shoeing shoes on horses? Yes, sir. Yesterday I got kicked by a mule. No kidding. Did it kick you hard? Do you see that hole in the roof? Yeah. That ain't for ventilation. <laughs> yeah, I went sailing through the air so graceful that two pilots from the Flying Patrol asked me for my autograph. <laughs> Say, that's a mighty fine horse you got there, Mr. Yeah. Did I? You want to buy him? No, you jipped me on the last horse I bought from you. No kidding. Yeah, that horse was so knock kneed before he could take a step, his right knee called out signals. <laughs> <laughs> well, this horse ain't knock kneed No, but how come his neck is so long? I don't know. Hey, maybe it's because he's head so far from his body. Huh? <laughs> Whoa! Well, calamity. Hello, did I? Yeah, you're glad. I'm glad to see you, Calamity. Maybe it's because gentlemen prefer blondes. I ain't no blonde. I ain't no gentleman. <laughs> Give me a kiss, Calamity. Oh, all right. Boy, you kiss me like that once more, and I'm yours for life. <laughs> Thanks for the warning, did yeah. I? <laughs> Say, Dead Eye, you've got to help me and the citizens of this town. Yeah. That Mr. Quirtsy is a rat. <laughs> He's stealing all the money from my bank. Yeah, very much money. I ain't seen so much green stuff since I took off that engagement ring you gave me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll hop on my old trusty horse and speed over there. Careful, Dead Eye. He's tough. Yes, yeah, so am I. Just feel the muscle in that arm. Go ahead, feel it. Oh, doggone it. I said feel it, not squeeze it. <laughs> Well, I guess I better get going. Here's your horse, boss. Well, put him down. <laughs> well, come on. Get up there. Oh, well, here's the bank. It's the stone's throw from the script, wasn't it? <laughs> hey, I guess I'll go in, and so nobody will recognize me, I'll pull my head down over my eyes. <laughs> Then what can I do for you? <laughs> I want to get some money to pay off a loan at the Happy Credit Company. Happy Credit Company? Yeah, two boys run it. Joe Happy and his brother, not so. <laughs> All I got for collateral is this gun. Well, that's not necessary. I'll give you $2 on your face alone. Well, now, that's mighty nice of you, but... How am I going to look without my face? Better, I imagine. Yes. <laughs> Come on, hand over that little black bag. I'm dead eye, and this is a hold-up. Now, wait, dead eye. I should have some of that money. Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's open up the valise and we'll both grab, huh? Well, that's fair. Yeah, sure is. Now, you hold the valise. <laughs> All right, you tin horn. Stick them up. I got my forty-five pointed right at your head. That's a forty-five. Don't look a day over 39. <laughs> now, look, let's do this according to the law of the West. I'll count three, and then we'll both draw. Okay. Are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> I must be getting faster on the draw. Don't feel sorry for him, folks. Five pounds of sugar just fell from under his coat. <laughs> then we have Clem, the fellow from Vincent's. He really has a lot of animals, and today he's looking for a lost pig. And he's on his way to Daisy June's house so that she'll help him find it. <laughs> Well, here all he is. <laughs> oh, big, 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 Got on your face. Powder. Mmm. Mmm. 
Winchester, too. <laughs> Say, what you limping for, Clem? Well, I'm saving shoe leather, so I walked over here in my bare feet. You did? Yep. Gosh, look at all the things you picked up between your toes. <laughs> Yo, see anything there you like? <laughs> Good to me, Clem. If you'd only take me someplace once in a while. Well, I took you someplace last night. It was very romantic, too. Yeah, very romantic. There we were, all alone, just us five. Five? Yes, you and me and then three soldiers that was guarding the bridge. <laughs> what you doing over here, Clem? Well, I lost my, my blue ribbon pig. And I was wondering if you'd help me look for her. Uh-oh. You want me to help, huh? Mm-hmm. Sounds like the pig must be in the swamp. Must be. I've looked every place else. <laughs> I've uh, got my canoe ready. Will you go with me? Uh, I don't want to go in that swamp. I'm scared. Oh, there's nothing to be scared about. <laughs> if you see anything, I'll be right behind you. You'll be right behind me? Yep, going the other way. <laughs> Hey, look, if you go with me when I sell the pig at the market, I'll give you half the money. Well, okay, let's go. Okay. Say, Clem, when you sell a pig, what you gonna do with your money? Well, for one thing, I'm gonna get a haircut. Clem, after all these years, you're finally gonna have a haircut? Yep. Kinda like to see what's under there myself. (laughs) Well, here's the canoe, Daisy June, and here's the paddle. Now, don't paddle too fast, because I don't want to worry about you. Look at all them smudge pots over there. Yep, but you're the only girl for me, Daisy June. <laughs> Careful, Clem, there's an alligator. An alligator? Oh, boy, that's just an old log. I'll poke it and show you. Oh, well, half a canoe's better than none at all. <laughs> Gee, this swamp is dark and dreary, ain't it? Yep, it's a real swamp. Chloe! <laughs> Chloe! Probably working over at Lockheed. <laughs> Grace, I hope I find my pig, because I was raising her scientifically. What do you mean? Well, one day I would feed her, and the next day I would let her starve. Well, why did you do that? Well, I figure when they turn her into bacon, one strip would be lean, and the next strip would be fat. <laughs> and we can serve it with that egg. Hey, listen, I hear her. I hear her. I know that grunt anywhere. There she is. Yep. Well, hey, who do all those little pigs belong to? Well, them's their little babies, Clem. Well, how did they get there? The stork brung them. Fifteen of them? Well, how did he carry them in a bomb rack?
thank you. Say, Truman, did you know that our sponsor, Mr. Rawley, and I are related? Oh, so that's how you got the job. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, we both got the same uncle, Uncle Sam. Well, Red, count me in on that family, too. Yeah, and we've had a lot of nice letters from our Uncle Sam, thanking us for the thousands of dollars worth of war stamps that were redeemed through Raleigh coupons. Well, say, that's mighty nice, Red. But in reality, that official commendation belongs to the loyal Raleigh cigarette smokers who are cooperating with the national effort by redeeming their valuable Raleigh coupons for those vital war stamps. Yes, now your Raleigh coupons are more valuable than ever because each time you trade them for war stamps, you're helping to secure freedom, America's most priceless premium. Well, don't you have something nice to say to the folks who haven't smoked Raleigh, Struman? I certainly do, Red. Those of you who have not yet tried Raleigh cigarettes have a special smoking surprise in store for you. You'll enjoy Raleigh's smoothness, mildness, the golden goodness of their superior tobaccos. And you'll enjoy saving those valuable Raleigh coupons, redeemable for luxury premiums, including United States war stamps. Yes, now more than ever before, it pays in many ways to smoke Raleigh's. The pack with a coupon on the back... Raleigh Cigarettes. Getting back to people and their love for animals, we have a lady and her little boy. Uh, Junior is always finding stray animals, so uh, let's see what he finds on his way home from the store. Now, Harriet, you be my mother, and I'll be the mean little kid. <laughs> Boy, I better hurry up home and eat goatee. My mama be waiting. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, gee, there, that cute little dog. He's still following me. <laughs> yeah, well, he stopped following me, though. Here, doggy, have another Frankfurter. Oh, <laughs> Come on, have another Frankfurter. Oh. Listen, I told you before, I ain't got no mustard. <laughs> now, come on, little doggy. Come on. Now, this is where I live. I will take you inside and surprise my mummy. Come on, now, I'll hide you under me coat. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, it's me, man. Oh! Well, what happened to your voice? Oh! Too much vitamin B1. <laughs> Did you get all the groceries I wanted? Yeah, here's two packs of potatoes, a pound of butter, and a dozen of eggs. Oh. Uh, scrambled, of course. <laughs> and here's that carton of Raleigh cigarettes. Oh, oh, oh! Junior, is that a dog? Well, what do you know? So it is. <laughs> How you suppose he got under me coat? Probably went with a suit, huh? <laughs> no, I will take him up and put him in my room, and we will take him back to the store the first thing in the morning. Where are the Frankfurters I sent you for? Now, let's not get no demand. <laughs> I wanted them for dinner. I had my heart set on some hot dogs. Well, cook him. <laughs> Can I keep him, Mummy? Hmm? Well, I don't know if you can keep him or not. Aww. He's certainly the silliest looking dog I ever saw. Shh, not so loud, Mummy. Well, what's the matter? He is a silly looking dog. I know, but he thinks he looks like Victor Mature. <laughs> well, I, I don't know whether your father will let you keep the dog. Well, he's a handy little fellow. I've been nice. I've been good boy. Did you know how clean me face is? Yes, your face is clean. How come? He's a handy little fellow. Ain't he? <laughs> I've never seen such a black dog. Yeah, he is black. He's coal black. Yeah, he is coal black. He's black all over. Yeah, he's sure black all over. What shall we call him? Brownie. <laughs> he's smart too. Every time I throw a stick, you know what he does? He runs and fetches it back. Nope, he just sat there and looked at me like a dope. <laughs> I think you'd better take him outside and let no, him No, no, I want to keep him. No, Junior. You let me keep him or I will tell. You'll tell what? I will tell everybody you always turn around when you hear, Hey, Mabel. Junior! <laughs> Get away. Don't you hit me. Don't you hit me. Don't you use that tone of voice with me. <laughs> oh, oh, you hit me. You hit me. You broke my widow teeth. You broke my widow teeth. <laughs> Open your mouth and let's see if any of your teeth are loose. Oh, dang. Boy, I look like a real moron now, don't I? Junior, don't you know it's unhealthy to carry money in your mouth? Now she told me. <laughs> all right, Junior, get that dog out of here before your father comes home. Okay, I can't keep him. It's all right, Mummy. 
That's all right. You break to me, widow heart. You go your way, I go mine. Oh, dear, here comes your father. Hmm, sober today. <laughs> Hello, dear. Hello, Junior. A dog! Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get away from me. Get away from me. Come here, doggy. Don't do that. Don't do that. He's the head man. Don't do that. Oh, 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 oh. He's a handy little fellow, ain't he, man? Can I keep him now? No, you can't. Go in the other room. I'll put this dog out. Okay. What have you got for dinner? Well, I'll have to send Junior after some more frankfurters. Junior? Junior? Here I am, Mommy. I mean, little Bridget coming in short pants. It is? <laughs> yeah, it is. You better look out because I just planted a firecracker in the gold seat bowl. Junior! <laughs> now I'll teach them to make faces at me. <laughs> Junior, get some more frankfurters. Okay, I will go. I adopt. Hello, mister. Is you the butcher? Oh, yes, I am, son. What can I do for you? Well, here's a dollar. I want a dozen of hot dogs and be sure they are all A1. Oh, going to eat them for supper, huh? No, we're going to hit each other over the head with them. We're going to do Okay. All right. Here you are. Now, hold the bag up so they won't drag. Okay. okay. And here's your change. Okay. Now, be sure and give your mother all the change. Yeah. You wouldn't spend a single penny of it for candy, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Where did they get dopes like that? <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Goodbye. Oh, gee, look at that little pony all by his tail. I wonder if I could take him home with me. I could hide him in my room. If I do, I get a weapon. I won't do it. He's too big. When you're smiling, and you pipe smokers will smile if you listen to Del King. Pipe smokers, the first time you smoke Sir Walter Raleigh, you'll say, why haven't people told me these things? Well, just listen. Sir Walter Raleigh is a leading favorite among all pipe smokers. And it has a rich nut-like flavor, a distinctive smoothness and mellowness that only Sir Walter Raleigh offers. Sir Walter Raleigh is an extra-choice blend of superior burleys, cured and aged to perfection. And its aroma is a pleasing fragrance that's welcome every place. So, men, try Sir Walter Raleigh tonight. Remember, we'll all be back again next week at the same time. Red Skelton, Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, Wonderful Smith, and your announcer, Truman Bradley. Until next week, then. Uh, before saying goodbye now, I want to say something to the folks back in Indiana. Don't forget that April the 23rd is the beginning of the pledge card campaign for war bonds. Goodbye now. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Golden Mayor Studio. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>